But Jonathan Gresham did not think that it was all right for what it was. And the reports came out afterwards that apparently he and Tony had had a discussion which led to him cussing Tony Khan out that got so loud that the, at least on his part, maybe not on Tony's, that the people outside the room, security guards, whatever, could hear it. I know you've got a piece. They did a follow-up article on this with some more information on PWInsiderElite.com that we recommend everybody check out. They actually print legitimate shit. But I can understand Gresham's discontent, malcontent, and I'll try to explain it, and there's only one flaw in his logic and his thinking that I can point out, which I will do in a second. He said they signed him because he was the Ring of Honor world champion. I don't know how it came to be that this guy came to be the Ring of Honor world champion while Ring of Honor was still a thing, but apparently that happened. So as the Ring of Honor world champion, when Tony Khan buys the company, he apparently signed Jonathan Gresham to an ROH slash AEW contract. And that was, well, April 1st or 2nd, Tony bought the thing. So April, May, June, that's three and a half months ago. And during that time, I guess Gresham has wrestled on either their YouTube program or something, the dark shows or whatever, um, three times, I think they said, three or four, right? And otherwise, he said he'd never really had any kind of conversation with Tony Khan past saying hi and bye, and nobody had been in contact with him about anything about this contract he signed or, or whatever. And he was, and we've heard this complaint. We've heard that if Tony doesn't talk to you, then a lot of other people don't talk to you because they don't really know what to say. And Tony spends a lot of time on his little you know, friends and fetish objects like, you know, pockets, his Halloween costume and whatever, but he's left some of the other guys kind of hang around and wonder why. So if I was Jonathan Gresham and I'm the Ring of Honor world champion and I get signed and I don't get used, I don't get put on any kind of TV, I don't get pushed, and then without being told ahead of time that I'm dropping the title, I show up at the building and find out I'm going on first, even though that was explained, and I'm getting about 10 minutes, and I'm doing a job in the very first title defense I've made, I would be pissed off too. And I would go in and cuss somebody and yell and ask what the fuck in various types of ways. There is only one flaw with that, and Brian, can you guess what that is? No, what is it? Jonathan Gresham thinks he's fucking over. And he ain't, and he wasn't. And the flaw in that is, what the fuck? You've got a con... You're, the company that you worked for, which was the highest level position that you've ever had in the business, just basically was either going to go out of business or be sold, and it was sold and the new owner has signed you to a contract, but you got to look in the mirror and go, okay, now I'm in the same company, the same parent company with CM Punk and fucking this guy and that guy and these big television stars and or people that have had a lot more time in this company and or experience in the ring and or high profile positions. and if he thought for one second that he was going to retain that title over Claudio Castagnoli and that they were going to continue using him as the Ring of Honor champion, there's where he made his mistake because he should have looked in the mirror and realized, okay, at least I've got a job. At least I've got a chance to show that I can perform or what I can do or whatever. But that he expected that there was going to be some push involved, I think is indicative possibly that he's reading his own publicity like a lot of these other guys are and doesn't realize his standing in the community. So yes, if 
Terry Funk had come in and said, fuck you, or goddamn Stone Cold Steve Austin, or pick a big name from an era. I would understand it perfectly, and I'd be on their side. But with Jonathan Gresham, the people farted at him to begin with. And it, it, there's a place you, you, with a tag team, or as I mentioned, with a submission artist gimmick, upper mid-card, but not a world champion of anything. Come on. Let's be real. And so apparently that happened beforehand. And then he went out and was professional and did his, his duty. I said duty. And dropped it and had a shit look on his face and then left. And apparently has not only deactivated his Twitter account, but closed down his local promotion in Atlanta that he'd run three shows on. and. uh has said that may be his last match for the foreseeable future. Quite an extreme reaction to doing a job when you've been getting paid for the past four months to work four times. Well, you mentioned an article from PW Insider Elite. And, oh, and I, sh I should say, hold on, before you go into that, now we don't know that the money is guaranteed. It could be that Tony Khan signed him to a per-date contract, even though... We haven't heard for Tony doing that for a lot of people. A lot of people have been collecting a regular mailbox check, uh, you know, with Tony so far. So if it was per date, yeah, Gresham, go ahead. Tell him, fuck off. If it was a guaranteed check every week, whether you work or not, with your current situation and the current choices that face you in the wrestling industry, I think you fucked up. But read that article. This is by Mike Johnson. If you saw the look on Jonathan Gresham's face at Ring of Honor death before Dishonor pay-per-view, you probably guessed he wasn't a very happy person heading to the ring this past Saturday. Add in that he came in and out of the ring without his usual costuming and didn't even wait for his new manager, Prince Nana, to walk out with him. As we talked about on our Ring of Honor post-game show for Elite subscribers, it was easy to guess something was amiss and it was. According to several sources, Gresham was very upset when told the planned outcome of his match, which saw him lose the Ring of Honor title to Claudio Castagnoli in under 11 minutes in the opening bout of the pay-per-view. As originally reported by Fightful.com, Gresham had words with AEW and Ring of Honor owner Tony Khan, which one person described to PW Insider as, quote, ugly and unprofessional. One version of the story making the rounds is that Gresham cursed out Khan. Another story talent Khan! Another story talent or sharing is that Gresham used his ranking in the Pro Wrestling Illustrated magazine PWI 500 list as an argument as to why he should be presented better. That can't be real. That can't be real. That can't be real. I bet you it can. You know what? It In not a heated confrontation like this, but I have actually heard stories of several modern wrestlers over the past several years going in with the PWI 500 going, look at their job. Yeah, they think it's a deal. They think it's a deal. One guy was happy one year he made 500. But no, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, some of these fucking guys are such fucking marks for themselves or what they haven't learned about the business that they would think that that was a selling point. Well, apparently it was a big point for Jonathan Gresham, so that, in the midst of an ugly and unprofessional cursing out of Tony Khan, has led to him seemingly being gone from Ring of Honor and AEW at the time. And, uh, well, John, we, we barely knew you. Hardly got a chance to get acquainted. 